Um, welcome to Google My Business. I'm Renee Dombowski from Business Station. I'm just going to give everybody another minute to join. Um, but while I'm waiting for everyone to join, I thought I'd introduce myself and just let everyone know that I'm happy for everyone to interject, ask questions um, at any time. It's okay. I like things to be really interactive. Um, also, if you like, you can pop some questions in the chat box and as they come in, I'll answer them throughout the session as well. So um, with that, we might just get started because we're right on nine o'clock. All right, so Google My Business, it's one of my favourite platforms um, and today we've got quite a few people joining the session. And um, I would like to learn a little bit more about your business too before we get started. But for anyone who's joined us today and they are maybe not aware of the mentorship program, I just wanted to let you know about that. It's a um, $44 and you get three hours of one-on-one -on -one mentorship from one of our digital advisors. But also in addition to that, you must complete four hours of workshops or webinars so this would be one of those workshops um, there's also face-to-face -face workshops available in some regions so that's something that you can look into as well even though you complete this program and there's four hours of workshops and webinars included you can actually access as many workshops and webinars as you want free of charge but you must complete the four hours to complete the program so is there anyone here who isn't aware of this and are there any questions about it at all? No. no. no, no, no. <laughs> Excellent. So with that, since we've only got a few people who've joined us so far, um, I'd really like to just learn a little bit more about your business. Are you currently using Google My Business? So I'll start with Julie. Uh, okay. Um, I applied for Google My Business and that's as far as I got and I got my little uh, registration number and I haven't done anything else with it. Sure, no worries. Um, so that will be your verification code, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd recommend doing that as soon as possible just so that it doesn't um, expire. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, Julie, what's your business name and, and what type of business is it? Uh, my business name is Juliana Jewellery. Yep. Um, I'm a retail, I'm a man, I manufacture jewellery. Uh, I don't have a shop. I just I basically work on commission. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. not an online shop either? Uh, I know, not yet, but I'm planned to do that because I yeah. do have a bit of stock that I accumulated over, you know, that, that um, I'd like to shift. Yep. So yeah, definitely. I've had a website for years and my website manager never suggested that I have a shop. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm, and I'm trying to find products that I could create a shop from. So there you go. <laughs> okay, no problem. Well, if you want jewellery, you have a look at mine. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you so much. Um, and definitely Google My Business is a good idea. Yeah. Um, hi, Malcolm. How are you? Good, thank you. That's good. So what's your business? Um, basically, I'm, I, I've been in IT and smart, well, smart building technology and things like that, but I'm actually you know, uh, just looking to launch maybe a cybersecurity offering that um, I'd need to reach businesses and people, you know, in these, these days, so many people getting attacked by yep. you know, viruses and spam and, you know, it's a global industry. So there are a lot of seniors and a lot of boomers and a lot of people who are absolutely prey and victims, you know, to, to this. So I'm just working on a concept. So it's early days. I'm just looking at the different, different mediums media to where I could promote it. It might not be suitable on Google, my business, but you'll, you'll maybe convince me. Yeah. I mean, even from what you've said there, it sounds like um, you're not just targeting businesses, but you're targeting just everyday internet users. Is that right as well? Yeah, correct. Um, you know, who pops to my mind immediately is uh, schools and parents. Oh yeah. There's so many creeps out there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, need, they need to be That's weeded it. out. <laughs> Thank you so much. And so um, have you currently got a Google My Business listing? I think I, I might have actually, I'll go and check, but I think I think okay. I actually ended up, I got a number, yes, I think I got a number just the other day, a sort of yeah. a registration number. So I'll take your tip. What, what did you say one must do is uh, what to keep it active? What should one do? Um, so I'll show you all where to go to do that today. We'll go in and I'll show you right. how to verify the business so that you can get that happening. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, Kel, how are you? 
Hello, can can you hear me? Hi, oh, yes, I can. Hi. Hi. I'm good, thank you. Um, I don't know that much about Google My Business. I have yep. done ads, um, fiddled around with that, but I don't, yeah, I guess I'm here to learn about Google My Business. Yep, not a problem. Hopefully I can help you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Um, oh, what was your business, sorry? Um, I sell junior fiction and picture books with um, augmented reality. Beautiful. Uh, Yep. Very exciting. Thank you. Um, Kimberly. Are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Hi, Kimberly. How are you? Good. That's good. Um, so, yeah, what was your business, Kimberly? Um, so, we're a construction company in Toowoomba. Um, oh, what company? Sorry, I just can't quite hear you very well. Construction company. Construction. So we specialize in um, like renovations and custom new builds. Yep, excellent. Have you got a Google My Business listing? Yeah, we do. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, and Naomi. Hi, how are you? Hi, Naomi. I can't hear it very well. Can you? Um, not sure if are you close to the microphone? Can't hear, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? There you go. Yeah, can hear you now. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, yes, uh, so I am uh, about to launch my new business, uh, which yep. is basically a personal archiving service. So um, yep. it's helping people record stories, whether it's their pregnancy story or their birth story or uh, letters to their children and things like that. Excellent. Thank you. And do you have a Google My Business listing? Not yet. I have recently just uh, set up a Facebook for business, Instagram for business, and I'm working on my LinkedIn for business. So Google My Business will be next. Excellent. That's good. I'm glad. Thank you. And um, Matthew. Yeah, good morning. Hi. Um, I've got a, a product I bought to market. Um, it's called the Refund Bag. Yep. Um, it's aimed at the 10 cent container industry. Um, it's a bag that fits in your bin and it's reusable. Um, they're going quite, they're going really well at the market. So um, Facebook's been good. Yep. And I've got my uh, Google business profile up. Yep. Um, I've done a little bit of Google ads just to test the market there, and it was, it was okay, but um, expensive compared to Facebook. And, okay. yeah, just here to learn what we can do with it. Yeah. So can you tell me what the name of that was again? Uh, Refund Bag, R-E-F-U-N-D. Refund Bag. That's great. I'll um, check that out. Do you know the cool. other thing that if you're already in that space, you know what could also be a good um, product? Go for it. Uh, you know how, um, is it Coles or Woolies now are advertising the collection of soft plastics? Yes. My husband puts a little tiny, like just a freezer bag in our bin to collect the soft plastics. So I wonder if you could create a product for that as well. Yeah, um, I thought about um, the lids aren't really going anywhere, but soft plastics, um, just a little insert in that bag as well. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, yeah, everyone's doing that. That's good. Yeah, thanks. And no um, excellent. Thank you. And then Patricia, how are you? May or may not hear me. No, Hello. Oh, hi, Patricia. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Good, thank you. So I've got a very business? bad connection here. It keeps dropping in and out. Oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, so tell us, what's your business? The Thread Teller. So I uh, design and make um, children's clothes. Um, nice. They are, excuse me, my cat just ran across the screen. That's okay. <laughs> um, hang on a minute. I think. Yeah, um, um, and they're very bespoke, very original. Um, yep. And um, I heard you asking the others, have they um, got a Google, um, what do you call it, a Google... Google My Business listing. listing. Yeah. Yes. I just finished it last night. Very good. Okay. Well, it's yeah. probably great timing then for you. So um, with that, it's just, a, it's really good for me to understand what industries you guys are from, as well as, you know, maybe the level of experience. Because with your Google listings, some products and services are available depend or not available depending on the category of business that you are. So let's say, for example, most businesses on your actual listing, you can post to that listing. Uh, whereas if you're accommodation, like a hotel, you can't post to it. So um, with that, 
I would recommend for any business to start with two social platforms and manage those really well. So get a really good handle on it, post consistently. Um, and those two platforms that I would always recommend that a business start with would be Facebook and Google My Business as the bare minimum. Once you sort of get a handle on that, that's when I would start looking at additional platforms such as Instagram or Pinterest or Snapchat or LinkedIn or whatever. So um, Google My Business is an absolute necessity for any business. And we'll look at why. So excuse me for a second, guys. Um, I just want to say too, I'm working with one hand. So I'm really, um, I'm a bit slower than I normally would with um, flicking screens and stuff like that. So you'll just have to bear with me. <laughs> so Google My Business, what is it? So it's basically the way I think of it is like a virtual shop front. All of you will have seen it at some point and, and most likely engaged with it or used it for a business that you've searched for online. Um, if you do want to show up on Google search, it's imperative that you do have a Google My Business listing. So think of it like your virtual shop front. So it's really important to have one because the statistics are, so Google has more than 3.5 billion searches per day. And so we want to make sure that we show up for searches which are relevant to our business. When we have a Google My Business listing, it helps us show up for keywords as well. So we connect our phone number to it and people can click on the phone number and call directly from that clickable phone number on the listing. It connects to our website. It displays our Google reviews and we can actually manage all of the information that's on this listing. It just, it, people are able to ask questions about our business and it's really important that we are actively managing our Google My Business listing because if you're not actively managing it, other customers, other Google users can actually answer your customers' questions and that information isn't always accurate. So we want to make sure that we're ready to answer the question so that we give out accurate information. An example might be if I'm a beautician and someone asks me if I offer Botox. Well, you could have someone who says, oh, no, they don't offer Botox. These guys are just um, facials. And that information not, might not be correct because maybe you do now offer Botox. So you want to make sure that you're ready to answer those questions yourself. The other thing is uh, hours of operation is a common issue that I see with Google My Business listings. There's nothing more frustrating for a customer. Let's say if you're a restaurant and you haven't updated your hours of operation, maybe now you're closed on a Monday due to COVID. So you've closed on a Monday. It's a quiet day. And because you've lost staff, it's not worth trying to open and service anyone who comes in. So Mondays are now closed. But if you fail to update that information on your Google listing, customers could be turning up, maybe driving halfway across town to meet at your restaurant because your listing says that you're open. So a lot of people think that Google somehow updates this information themselves miraculously, but they don't. It's up to the business owner to update that information. Now, Naomi, you got a question? You're quiet too, Naomi. Sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, hang on. Might just need to get close to your computer microphone. I'll type it. There we go. Can you hear me? Just, it's very hard. It's very quiet. There you go. Is that you now? any better no it's very quiet i'll listen really carefully though uh, i was just going to say if you're an online uh predominantly service yeah so your hours are sort of like for example i only really work two days but people can contact me anytime and i'll contact within 24 hours back how does that work for opening hours so that would be like my um my agency, similar thing. So we, I still put down Monday to Friday, nine to four, say. Yeah. Um, if you, you know, I, you can put 24 hours if you like as well. So you can actually have it that you're always open. I personally still like to have, you know, um, 
I still like to have like some kind of set hours that people, you know, they can expect that I'm going to answer the phone between nine and four Monday to Friday if it's a business call. Yeah. Um, so the volume of Google searches grows roughly by 10% every single year and 90% of searches made on desktops are done via Google. So, you know, you've got all of your different, um, you know, browsers such as Safari or Yahoo or Bing or whatever it is. However, 90% of those are actually done on Google and 34% of near me searches are done by desktop and tablets that are done by desktop and tablet, sorry, uh, result in more in-store visits. So most of you will have, as a customer at least, engaged with the near me feature as well. So the benefits of Google My Business are that it is extremely easy to use. So for a bus busy business owner, it really does not take much of your time to actively manage the listing. Um, it is free. So like Facebook and LinkedIn and Oh, LinkedIn, I guess I've got the paid version, but there's a free version. With Google, you've got Google My Business is free itself. The only time you pay for anything is when you run Google Ads and Google Ads is a product which is within Google. Uh, it helps customers find you through Google searches. The information that you populate into your listing, such as your information or your about section or even the posts that you're regularly doing, um, helps people, helps Google match your listing or your business to searches that are done. Also, because it's connected to your website, you connect it, um, it can match keywords from your website to your listing to Google searches as well. It's really important for search engine optimization. It displays important information about your business. So for example, um, your, your map location, if you've got a physical bricks and mortar business, it's got your phone number, it's got your Google reviews, as I said, it's got your website. So it's very easy for people to find the information that they need to know about you if you make sure that you keep it up to date. Um, it brings your communication methods all together and it also builds trust with your customers. So they're able to look at reviews, they're able to look at customers' questions and make decisions on whether or not that they're going to visit your business. You can manage your own information. So like I said, it's up to you to make sure that the information on your listing is accurate. And you can interact with customers, including via using the messaging feature on the app. So I'll show you the app as well. Um, you can understand and expand your presence via insights and the insights that you can collect from Google My Business is incredible. I really, really, really like it, especially if you are a business that people physically visit, such as a tourism business or uh, maybe a restaurant or cafe or a retail you know, outlet. So that I'll show you the back end of a business. They've given me permission to share their insights. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and also the other thing you can do is make regular updates with photos, offers, you can post events, products. Um, people often say to me, well, a lot of people don't realise that they can actually post to their listing, but they can. Remembering that this information helps you match you to searches on Google, but also you can add photos of your business and your customers can add photos of your business. And the other thing that can happen is when are other customers, when customers are offering reviews and adding photos of your business to your listing, you can then use those images across other platforms. So it's a really great way to collect content for your digital platforms. And that's taken from the bird's eye view of your customer. So um, Malcolm's just asked a question. Uh, Malcolm's just put a tip in there for anyone who's having trouble with the audio. Um, I'm guessing from their own. Um, Malcolm, I'm not having trouble with anyone else's audio, so I'm not sure. Is that from the participants' audio are you talking about? So anyone who is having trouble, maybe just have a look at Malcolm's instructions that is put in the chat. Um, okay, so with that, um, frequently asked questions that I often get with regards to Google My Business. So do I need... A Google My Business listing if I have a website, 100%. So a Google My Business listing connects to your website. So ultimately, the goal of having a website, we want everyone to visit our website. That is basically the heart of our business. And Google My Business is a tool to drive traffic to your website. So that's, and we, all, we really, really do need a website. Google My Business 
does offer or Google offers a website, which is more like just a very, very basic landing page. And that could be maybe useful for a micro business that isn't quite ready to invest in a website or they don't have the funds for a website yet. But if I was going to really invest in anything in my business, my very first thing that I'll invest in is a website. Even if it's a micro site done by a web developer using, you know, WordPress. I personally am a WordPress fan. Um, do a bit of shopping around because, you know, there obviously prices do vary with developers. Um, but also consider with a website, if you don't have a lot of budget, make sure that it is a website that you're able to update yourself so that you're not having to ask your web developer to make basic changes for you. Okay. Uh, Malcolm said, so, oh, there we go. Julie's just asked, is it a must to have a website? 100%. Yeah. Um, and anyone who's having trouble with soft microphones, then just follow Malcolm's instructions. Thanks heaps, Malcolm, for that. Um, now, can I use Google My Business if I don't have a storefront? Yes, you can. So once upon a time with Google My Business, you had to have a fit, like a bricks and mortar business, a physical address for people to visit. And so anyone who worked from home or had virtual businesses, online businesses, they were creating, um, you know, sort of like the... Uh, they were doing sort of like roundabout ways of being able to create a Google My Business listing. But now what you can do is you can have a business online and say that you deliver services to certain areas. So you can say either Cairns to Townsville or you can say Queensland or you can actually say the whole of Australia. Obviously, it works better if you do have a physical location that you deliver services within. How, but for myself, with my agency, I can deliver services anywhere globally. But predominant, like mainly my, my business is within Australia. So I keep it to Australia. Um, so now you do not need a shop front to have a listing, which is really great. And how do I verify my listing? So we're going to go through and have a look at that today as well. We'll physically go in the back end of the listing. Can I schedule my Google My Business posts? No. So with most social platforms, you can use third-party programs such as Hootsuite or um, Sprout Social to schedule posts. Google My Business is different. So what I do with my agency is the cl our clients that we post for, we, when we do our scheduling for a client on a Monday, we will always post live to their Google My Business listing. Now, in saying that, I do know there is one platform which is a CRM, um, and I'm trying to remember, might have been Salesforce, which did actually offer the feature to schedule to Google My Business. And I've never actually done that myself I've never used that CRM to schedule to Google so I can't say how well that works and even if it's still available but I do remember that was something that they did offer I'm not quite sure how they did it so you know things are always changing so make sure that if you're you just do some research because if even though it's not available today it might be available next month so it's something to, to consider but with Google My Business it's really really very easy to manage and does not take much time and so one post a week especially if you take that post maybe from a facebook post that you've already created isn't going to take a lot of time for you okay yeah so let's have a look do you have one um if you're not sure if you have one i'll show you how to have a look to find out well, um you do have the desktop and we'll go on and have a look at that at a moment in a moment but also there is the mobile um, version. So this is what it looks like. So here's a mobile Google My Business listing and what it looks like. So what you would do to have a look to see if you've got one is you'd go to Google and you'd do a search. So let's have a look first of all, if there's a listing for, let's pretend my business name is Noah. I'm a restaurant based in Cairns. So N-O-A, the way I would have a look to see if there's one that's present and if it's verified, I do a search for Noah and the location say Cairns. And here we can see there's Noah Cairns. I'm going to click on that. Down the left-hand side, we've got the organic website listings. And then on the right-hand side, we've got the Google My Business listing. And it's that square. See that box? That's our Google My Business listing. Now, you can't control which photos people see here. These are photos that are customer photos, the photos that you upload, 
this is Google will actually choose which images get displayed here. The other thing is you've got your map. So the map is always there as well, especially if you, um, even if you choose Australia as being, it'll um, be in your business address, it will show like a map of Australia with like a red line around it, like a borderline. And then this one here that says see outside, a lot of people don't like that image because it might be that Google, so that's the Google has physically taken that photo of your shop front. So you can't change that. You've got to wait until Google one day goes around and takes a new photo from the street view. Um, the disappointing thing about that is sometimes you'll see a bin out the front or there's a vehicle that looks you know, a bit dodgy at the front of your, your um, shop front. You can't change that, unfortunately. That's the Google street view. So that's, that's what you're stuck with until one day they take another image. So there's Noah from the street view. And then you can see here, we've got website. So once we click on that, this now will actually record that as a customer click on the Google My Business listing. And that data will be able to see in the back end. So I'll show you where to find that soon. So that's a website click. I can get directions to their restaurant because I might be going there for lunch today. I can save this listing or I can call them direct. So I can either call them by clicking on the call button or I can call them by clicking on the phone number down here. So you can see it's a lot more convenient having this listing with really easy to access information and not having to try and find a business, go to the website. Once you're in the website, you're trying to find the phone number or contact information. Once you get to the web website, half the time the phone numbers are not clickable. So you've got to remember it and type it into your phone. Whereas the listing on the right-hand side makes it very easy to manage. So you can literally just click the phone number and it will automatically call it. As you can see here, we've got the Google reviews. They've got 927 nearly five-star reviews. If we click on that, it will then show us all of the reviews here and show us the newest, the highest, the lowest rankings. We can actually, as a business, if I had manager access to this business, I could go and reply to those reviews and you really should be replying to every single review, even the negative ones, because it does help with your um, ranking for your search engine optimization. Now, remember earlier I was saying that um, the hours of operation, they're really important to manage and keep on top of because people may turn up to your business on a day that you're closed and if you haven't updated your information here. So they're open seven till 10 every single day. However, what they can do is if they're closed on Christmas day or New Year's day, they can actually add that as information in the back end of their listing. So that, yep, yeah, normally it's open till seven till 10, but if it's Christmas day, it will show people that they are closed Christmas day. Um, they offer DoorDash, uh, this is their reservation link. Uh, and so as a customer, I can suggest an edit to this business. So if I turn up there and they are closed on a Monday, I can suggest an edit to their business information and whoever is managing this listing will get a, um, some information when they next sign into their listing saying that someone has suggested an edit and that is that you update your information to say that you're closed on a Monday. As the business, I um, can either accept that change or deny that change. We can also see here that there's questions asked by customers. So um, there's customers that are asking questions. Now, Samuel, he owns the restaurant, I know that, and he has answered that customer this Thursday evening. Now, if you're not on the ball, that Potent, that um, potential to get a customer in the door on that Thursday evening could be missed because you might not be answering their questions. Do you guys do training with cocktails and coffee? Um, and here you can see someone else has said, I'm not sure either. Someone else has said, I don't know. Best to ring and ask. So Samuel hasn't jumped in to answer the, that customer's question, but you know, with that question, he could go, oh, maybe that's something we could offer. That's interesting that they've asked that question or he should be answering them. Uh, and now with that, that's showing us the popular times of the day here. As we scroll down, wow. we can see here that they are not um, doing posts to their listing. So they're missing an opportunity 
to get more, um, I guess, views of their business by not posting. So I'll show you what it looks like when a business posts. And like I said, I recommend just one a week. So here we can see ISP Fish Market. Now I've got the, see here on the left-hand side, it says your business on Google and it gives us some analytical data, 28,000 views this month. Uh, we can edit profile. I can see this here on the left-hand side because I'm a manager or a user or an owner of this particular listing. So if we scroll down here, we can see that ISP has products that we're able to view. Or if we scroll down further, we can actually see that they are regularly posting to their listings. So the words that are in these posts do help them show up for words such as freshest seafood cans or um, Christmas prawns. So this is what a post looks like on Google. That's what it looks like. Um, it's not something that people engage in. So I generally um, suggest that you use more salesy type posts on Google, which are a direct promotion of your product. Whereas on Facebook, I always suggest that you do posts that are engaging your customers and you don't do direct pushy sales. So that's how I see them as a little bit different because Facebook's more about engaging, building relationships and that sort of stuff. Whereas Google's more about offering people the information they need to know about your business so they can make a purchase decision. So, um, Okay, so I've got another question here. As a new business, should I ask new clients to do a Google review or should I, or should it be organic? Definitely ask if they can do Google reviews. So um, when someone maybe says to you, oh, wow, that's fantastic. I really, you know, that, thanks so much for that. Or, you know, wow, that really helped. Or they say something great about a product or service. I always say to my customers, I always say, oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, if you really did get such value out of it. I'd love a Google review if you could do a Google review about it. And generally people will be pretty good about that. So um, you can share a link to your Google My Business to make it really easy for them to find you. Because if you're a brand new business on Google, sometimes it can be hard to find businesses on here. So if you have done a search for your Google My Business and you can't see it, then the next thing you should do is create one. So let's go do a search here for Google My Business. Create. So as you can see here, we've got at the top Google Business Profile. So if I'm going to click on that, I'll share this link with you guys right now in the chat so that you can copy it. Once you start the creation process, if there is a listing that's already there, but it might not be showing up when you do a search because it's not verified, it will actually do a suggestion. So let me show you what would happen. So I've gone into google.business.com forward slash create. The link is in the chat. Um, and so when you go in here, we're going to do a search for ISP fish market. And so... And so what's happened here, they've said, oh, Bramp Close, here's a suggestion. You go, yep, Bramp Close. You already manage this business profile. So it's picked up that there is a Google My Business profile for ISP Fish Market. Um, if it's not verified, it will take you through and prompt you to verify that listing. So if you do have a Google My Business listing and you're not sure how to find it without doing a Google search, I'll show you what to do now. So just go to Google, make sure that you are signed in to your Google um, account. So Google works in that you have a personal Google account and then you have Google My Business listings. So with Facebook, you've got a personal Facebook profile and then you have business Facebook pages. With LinkedIn, you've got a personal LinkedIn profile and then you have companies and all of those you access by making sure that you're logged into your personal profiles on each of those to then enter the business portal. So here I'm signed into my personal Google account to, and I use this to enter the business portal. So what can happen is a lot of the time 
people who maybe don't really understand Google and how it works accidentally create multiple Google personal profiles or accounts. So you might have, a, you know, two or three personal Google accounts. You might have a Google account that you've created with a business email for work that you use to sign into at work. I would always recommend bringing it back to one Google account only. You only need one Google account. And you're always using that to enter the business portal. So if you find that there's a listing for a business, Google My Business, and you don't have access to it, have a really good think about who might own that listing. And you can actually request to have access to it if you don't have it. And when you request to get access to it, Google will give you a hint of what Google account, what the email is um, that manages it. So it might say such and such owns this listing. So it might be like, um, let's pretend it's me. So it might be r dot 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 at gmail.com owns this listing. So then it might be like, oh, that must be Renee. But they'll only give you like a really small hint because of privacy. Um, and if anyone's not sure, we can actually do a screen share afterwards and I'll show you what that process looks like. So let's say I know that I own a listing. I'm not sure how to access it though. So go to your profile. On the left, I'm, I'm signed into the correct one, Renee Dembowski, Renee Gibbs Dembowski at gmail.com. So now what I can do on the left-hand side of my profile image, there's nine little circles. So that's the Google Apps. So if I click on the Google Apps and I currently manage a Google My Business listing, I can just scroll down and eventually everyone's apps will be ordered in a different way. I will see this little house here, which is a business profile. So if you've got that, you know that you currently manage or own a Google My Business listing. When you click on it, if you only manage one, it will take you straight into the back end of that particular listing. If you manage multiple, it will give you a list of all of the listings that you manage and then you select the one that you want to go in and manage. So I'm going to click on it. Let's see what I've got. And it's saying here's a list of your listings so that you currently manage. So I could select any one of these or if I want, I could go in and do a search. So I'm going to do a little search right now for the one that I want to look at. Okay. Oh, where is it? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So I'm just going to go fish. Here we go. So this one here. So it'll bring up that listing. So I've gone into the back end of it. On the home bar, so I'm just going to give you an overview of all the menus down the left hand side. This just gives us a brief overview. So your customer photos, um, your latest post, your actual reviews. Uh, you've got an incomplete business profile. So they're asking us to add our logo. Now, there was a glitch with this. So even though it says add logo, like it's missing, we know that the logo is in here. So this is the logo. Every listing that I've been working with has said that it's only 85% complete because you need to do your logo, but the logo is there. So it's obviously a glitch. It's taken us into the photos here. And as you can see, I can see an overview of the photos, which we've got. So, but we can filter it by a customer. So there's not many customer photos. If we were a cafe or a restaurant, you would see that that would be a lot. There'd be a lot more photos available. Uh, we can actually see by owner. So the photos that our business has uploaded from our owner or from the manage, the, um, the, what do you call it? Social media manager, say. So let's go back up to the home. So that's an overview here, right? If you've got anything that needs updating, it'll give you a little notice on the home page or your hours of operation, there's been a suggested edit. You can have a look at that and then accept them or de decline it. This is where you would do a post. So if you are a business category that is eligible to post, you will see that here. So you can see that there's posts here. I can do offers, what's new, events. So there's no events. Down here, if we click on this, we can create a post. We can create an offer. So it might be a discount. And as you can see down here, um, there's more details. So what's the offer details, the coupon code. Here's a link to redeem it, terms and conditions of the offer. 
picture or you've got a product so you can add a product and we saw that those products showed up on the front of this listing you can have an update so this is just like a post that you might do on Facebook uh, or an event so it's actually quite self-explanatory when you click on one of these so you add your photo you write your post you can include some hashtags in there as well and a button so you can do call now sign up learn more when you do learn more it will ask you for a link for people to click to then go to your website to learn more um, so that's where you will do posts and like i said the posts show up here so show the posts down the bottom of your listing you'll see this is where the products show up here and you'll see a lot of our uh, coles and woolworths do products and as we scroll down, if you're posting frequently, that will show up down the bottom. The benefit to these things are that when people do a Google search for perhaps uh, seafood cans or pr Christmas prawns, because you're posting about those things, then you've got more chance of showing up in the Google search. So that's where you do your post. Information. So it's really important to make this information as accurate and consistent across all platforms as possible. So things like um, you want to make sure that your hours of operation are the same on your Facebook, your Google, your website. Because if Google sees discrepancies across platforms, it sees you as an unreliable source of information and it doesn't give you as high a ranking. So you want to make sure that Every you, you do a regular audit of your platforms to make sure that you are updating all of them. So, you know, it's very easy when you're busy to quickly update your website, but then forget to update your Facebook and Google. Or you might update your Facebook and forget that actually Google's probably the most important platform to keep the accurate hours of information on. So as we can see here, we have picked business categories. Even though you might offer let's say you want to try and make it as broad and generic and a higher level description for the category as possible. So let's try and keep that to a seafood market and wholesaler. Um, let's pretend I'm a restaurant, a takeaway restaurant, but we also offer dessert. We just want to keep it as a takeaway restaurant, right? Because we don't want to then put in their dessert restaurant such and such restaurant, what will happen is Google will work that out themselves because you're connecting your website to it. They can actually cross-reference all of that information and they know that you also offer dessert. Also, by doing your posts, your regular posts, they know that you um, offer dessert because you might be talking about this week's dessert special. So don't do too many categories in here. Try and keep it as broad and high level as possible. This is your physical address. If you actually don't want your address to be displayed, when you create your Google My Business listing, you can hide your address. So what you say is, I deliver products and services to my customers and you don't want your, your address to be visible. There's a little option there to turn that off. Service areas. So these guys deliver to these areas. This is where they, they actually do truck deliveries. So... You can actually do cans in the broader area um, or you might say cans, Port Douglas, Athens and Tablelands. You might say Queensland, Australia, whatever. Then we've got our hours of operation in here. Uh, here we go. So the more hours, this is where, oops. Just going to have a quick look at this. Where is it? So that there obviously doesn't really describe this very well. So you can offer, you can put in things here like we do delivery, yes. And these are the special hours that we do delivery. We're not going to add it for this business because those hours change quite regularly. Uh, a restaurant though, like using like things like delivery services, then that would be really helpful. Maybe get dinner is open to a different time to breakfast. So breakfast is open these days between certain times. So you can get quite specific, just it, I guess it adds a little bit more complexity to you when you're managing your listing, which is probably fine. It's not going to be a huge amount of work. Um, then in here, this is where you can add things like you are closed or open on, this was Christmas Eve, they were open 5am to 5pm. So they had extended hours on that day. 
They are closed on Christmas Day, Boxing Day, the public holiday. They open on um, New Year's Eve. So they can put in these spe special hours of operation. And you could actually probably go in right now and flesh that information out for the whole of um, 2022. And I would recommend doing that now. And so here you can put an at symbol. So this is where it's your, pro oh, actually. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so you can delete your profile short name, but you can't add another one. All right, so I'm not quite sure for new listings if that handle name is still available, but you will have that option in there. Just be very careful because obviously now they won't allow you to edit that. Try and keep it maybe as consistent as possible with your Facebook handle and your LinkedIn handle if that's if it's available. This is your website. So the URL that you put in here is where you are sending people when they click on your listing up the top here and they click on website. So this button directs them to the link that you select in here. You can add products, products in here. So you can add a product and this is visible on the listing publicly here, which is where we saw this. So people can view the products that you offer. Go back to the info tab. And remembering that those keywords, so you might be doing sashimi grade tuna, when people do a search for that, you've got more chance of showing up if you've added that product on your listing. And we've got attributes. So things like, you know, are you, let's say you're a, a women's networking group. So you might identify as women owned and led. You might have wheelchair accessible seating, um, LGBTQ friendly, transgender. So obviously this isn't going to be relevant for a lot of businesses because it's a given, but um, drive through. So these guys might suddenly offer drive through due to COVID. So that's something that would be really important to add no contact delivery. So you can actually go through and add those things to your listing. This is the about section. This is only 750 characters. So you might want to have a look at your website and select a snippet of the about section from your website and put it in your listing because we still want to make sure that the blurb is still consistent with your website and your Facebook profile but your website will most likely have more than 750 characters. So just pick out the bit that best describes your business in a short blurb. Open date and just try and make sure that you fill this out as completely as possible. The more thoroughly you can fill this out, the better chance you have of showing up when people do a Google search. So things like your food ordering, you'll see different options down the left-hand side here depending on what category of business you are. So accommodation will be very different to something like a restaurant. Um, like I said, accommodation don't have the option to post. Uh, something like my business, which is a social media agency, my analytical data is not going to be as great as a business like this that gets a lot of foot traffic. So let's have a look at, um, before we go into the insights, because we will spend a bit of time in there and we're running out of time, let's have a quick, quick look at our reviews. So this is where you can have a look. And very quickly, you can go to the ones that you have not replied to. Even though this one hasn't been replied to, obviously we still go by the direction of our clients, but I would really recommend that you reply to every single review, even the negative ones. So in here, we've replied to every review except for one. So messages, if you want to use that messaging feature, you need to use that via your app. So they've said that here, this was turned off due to inactivity. Um, you can manage this through the Google My Business app though. So with Facebook, um, you know, if you go to your desktop with Facebook, you can do everything you need to do just by going to the website itself, like facebook.com. Whereas if you want to manage it through your phone, you need to download multiple different apps. So you've got your Facebook personal app, then you've got your Facebook business app, then you've got your Facebook ads app, then you've got your Facebook analytics app. So there's an app for everything that you really need to do within Facebook. The same is for Google. So if you want to manage your Google My Business listing, you'll need to download the Google My Business app. 
So Google My Business, Google has like Google Prime, Google Analytics, Google um, Ads, and Google My Business. So I would recommend downloading this app on your phone as soon as possible so that when you do need to manage it quite quickly or you might need to respond to a review quickly, you can do it from your phone very easily. So Google My Business, it's the little blue house, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute in your app store. Photos, obviously photos, it's quite self-explanatory in here as well. You can add a photo here and you can say whether it's your cover image or whether it's just a photo of the business. Here you can add videos as well. So you can change your cover image, your logo. Um, and remember earlier I was saying you can create little micro sites which are more like a landing page for your business if you don't have a website. I still recommend doing an actual physical website um, be it WordPress or something like that. But this is something that is available. It's not pretty. It's very, very basic. And this could be something that you might just use as a really quick sh short-term solution until you're ready to invest in a website. And users. So this is where you can see who has access to your listing and what level of access they have. So in here, um, you want to make sure that you are, as the business owner, the primary owner. So when you're the primary owner, you get basically the highest level access and you can have your social media manager as an owner or a manager. I probably recommend an owner, but even if you make them an owner, they can't kick you off. You will still always have that primary owner access. So make sure you've got that. A lot of the time businesses have had their web developer create their Google My Business listing for them. And so the web developer has the primary ownership or the uh, social media manager might have that. Just ask them to transfer that primary ownership over to you and they can still remain in there as an owner, but you want that, that highest level because it's a real pain in the bum trying to get accesses back. If, you know, maybe that your things change and you don't use an, a social media manager anymore or you change web developers, so my favorite part is the insights. So let's have a look at some data. First of all, I'm gonna have a look at the new profile performance here. And in here, this, this information that I could like to have a look at is, in the last, um, since August to, let's have a look at the date. It's disappeared. Here we go, August to January. These words were searched for and these our profile popped up when people searched for these terms. Seafood cans, excellent. That's what we want to pop up for. ISP cans, makes sense. It's our business name. Seafood market, great. Cans markets, maybe not be so relevant. So 435 times our listing popped up when someone searched for cans markets. Seafood, our listing popped up 426 times when someone searched for that. That's good because we want to, it's quite a broad search terms, but it's for something that we offer. So we want to make sure we pop up for that. As we scroll down, we can see best seafood restaurant cans. Well, we're not a restaurant, so that's okay. Best seafood market cans. We only popped up less than 15 times. We really probably want to work on getting our listing to pop up more times. It could be that maybe that search term doesn't get used often, or it could be that another seafood restaurant, I mean, a seafood um, retailer or exporter or whatever is getting those listing, their listing pop up more often. And it could be that they've included best seafood marketing cans in their posts or their listing, and we haven't. So we might wanna work on including that long tail long tail keyword it's called because it's got multiple words in our um, posts just to see if that helps that ranking pop up further as we go down further here in the last month we can change that to the last quarter or the last week but let's go the last quarter our listings popped up uh, 49,973 times Majority of those searches that we popped up for were through discovering us. So 63% of the time, people discovered us or our listing because of a product or a service that we offer. So that's excellent because it's people who don't already know about us. They're searching for products and we happen to offer them and then our, our listing popped up. Or the 
minority of the time, it was through a direct search for our actual business name or address. So these are people who already know about us, but maybe they don't know um, where to find us. So they're like, oh, what's their address again? Or it could be that they want to find our phone number quickly or our website. And so the other one is branded. So this here is a very small amount. And that could be that we offer tassel salmon. So I can't even, there we go, 165 times we've popped up because someone searched for a product or a service that we offer that's a brand related to the business. So let's say we do tassel salmon or something like that, which is a brand of salmon. Then people have searched for that and our listings popped up due to that. So I think that's really interesting, that data. Uh, down here we can see where people have looked for us on search or on maps. So people search for us more on search. This here, you can see the Christmas period for seafood is really um, busy. So they've looked at our listing on search on the 24th of December, 848 times for the listing and on maps, 1,338 times. Uh, okay, so as we go down again over the Christmas period, you see that this always spikes at Easter and Australia Day as well. In the last quarter, let's have a look at that. Definite spike there. So for us, we know that traffic's high for seafood um, over Christmas time. We really want to make sure that we capture the majority of the market so that that spikes even higher over Christmas. So We've had in the last quarter, people have physically visit our web, visit our, visited our website as a result of clicking on our Google My Business listing. So this isn't just visiting it by organic search or somehow ending up on our website through, from Facebook. This is they have physically clicked on this website button or the call button or the directions. This is the data that we've collected from that. So 1.12 thousand website visits. Imagine if we didn't have that listing there, how many of those would we miss out on because our competitor might have a listing that pops up. It's a lot more visible. It's a lot easier to access. Um, Google's delivering, giving us information that's very easy to access and engage with. We've had 535 people click on request directions and 570 people call us. This here shows us where people have traveled from when they turn on their maps to request directions. So in the last quarter, we've had people travel from, let's have a look at this, down here, oh, Tolga, Atherton. So we've had people from Atherton turn on their maps to find us. So they might be like in Atherton, oh, I've got to go to ISP to pick up my seafood. Where are they located again? So this tells me that we've got people who are, you know, from within their region but not local who are travelling to our business. Do we need to run some kind of a marketing campaign to people in Atherton about our seafood um, offers or do we maybe need to look at offering them some kind of a discount for people in the Atherton Tablelands area or do we need to do a delivery once a week or once a month up to our customers in Atherton because if they're the number that are just turning the maps on, there's obviously a much larger number who are coming down who know about us. So it's a good way to sort of analyse the data and figure out, you know, how you might want to plan your marketing for the year or the quarter ahead. So this shows us phone calls time of the day. So what's our busiest time of the day for phone calls? It's at 10 and maybe what's the best, the busiest day of the week. And this could maybe help us, you know, work out for our administrative um, staffing or, you know, we might find that we're busier popular times of the day on a Saturday or a Monday, Tuesday. That can help us work at our staffing. Photo views. So we get uh, 72,000 photo views on our business, but businesses like us in our category other seafood markets get 40,000. So we're doing really well with our photo views. However, businesses like us get more customer photos. So we have more owner photos and they have more customer photos. So we need to work out, can we do something that we can actually encourage our customers to get 
upload more photos and do more reviews for us and upload a photo with their review of our product, we can maybe create some kind of a campaign for that. So this is like a very, very brief overview to Google My Business and how you can manage it. Um, with that, we're just going to go through, oh, I've got a question here. Okay, is it necessary to sign up for Google Analytics? Yes, it is. So Google Analytics is more from your website point of view where traffic comes from all different referral um, methods such as Facebook, organic search, um, it could be Instagram, it could be Google Ads. Whereas this Google My Business listing, the analytics that we just looked at then, that's analytics reporting specifically on your Google My Business listing that people engage in, nothing else. So not the actual website data. Yeah. So to optimize your listing, you want to make sure that you verify it. So that's telling people that, yes, you legitimately own that listing and that your information is correct. Add as much detail as possible. Complete your business description. Add photos and videos, post regularly, at least once per week. We've gone through all of this, but I'm just recapping it. Make sure that you respond to all reviews, even the bad ones. And do you have any booking software such as, you know, it might be um, Bookify or it could be Deliveroo if you're a restaurant. Make sure you integrate it with your listing. Do your customers ask questions? Make sure you respond and keep your business name consistent across the web because this means that you're a trustworthy, reliable source of information. This is what the actual app looks like. So if you go to the app store, search for Google My Business and download that app with the little blue shop on it. So when you do a search on your phone, the Google My Business listing will look slightly different just because you're viewing it from a mobile, but um, it's it sort of shows up on the main feed of your phone and takes up most of the screen, whereas on the desktop, it's offset to the right and you've got your organic Google search rankings like websites to the left. Um, the other thing I wanted to really briefly touch on as well is your local guides. So customers are contributing to your reviews, to your business product services online. There's something called local guides and everyone can become a local guide. And what the how you get to that is you go to, and I'll put this link in um, the chat as well here. put that in the chat so that maybe you can uh, become a guide yourself and that might give you a better understanding of how your customers are contributing to your business so I've already I'm already a guide I'll just click get started and it will take me to my profile so I've contributed to other businesses there's some people who are so active on this but reviews so these are the reviews that I've contributed to businesses these are the photos that I've taken of businesses so this one was in um, the little hedgehog cafe in Shinjuku in Japan. <laughs> Took a photo of a hedgehog there, did a review. These are edits, so edits that I've made to other businesses and whether or not they were accepted or approved. The more you offer information and updates and the more trustworthy you are as a local guide or a contributor, the more quickly Google will change other business information based on the the, the um edits that you suggest so google if i'm very trustworthy with google and i say this business is not located at 1 slash 11 sheridan street it's located at 2 slash 11 that might actually get updated automatically if i'm a very trustworthy local guide whereas if i'm not it might sit there for a while and wait for input from the business the business might reject it um, and so then my edit might not be approved so that's sort of how you can contribute as a customer and how you can better understand how people contribute to your business as well. And so last but not least, we did speak about verifying your business. So when you go through the process of creating your Google My Business listing, you will then be asked to verify it either via phone. And that means that if you've got a business phone number that you've also used for your listing, Often Google will allow you to call that number because it might be connected to your physical address to verify it. 
they will call the phone, give you a code over the phone and you can enter it straight away and it will automatically verify your business. However, if you're using a address, which is maybe a home address or even a business address, but the phone number is your mobile and it's not attached to the address, it might be, but Google might not be able to verify that you own that phone and own that physical address. They will uh, ask to send you a postcard to the address that your listing is that you've put in your information here. That they say will take six days to arrive, but it generally takes, especially in smaller regions, up to two weeks. As soon as you do get that verification code, you need to come to the home section in here and it will give you the option to put your code in. Let's see if I can find one with that's not verified yet so I can show you what it looks like. Once you put that code in, it will verify it. If you let it um, expire, you're going to have to order another verification code, which is a little bit frustrating. So here's one where it's saying that this business has uh, needs verification. So when you go to your listing home, scroll down, verification needed. When you click verify now, it will give you the option so to put in the code, these, these guys here, they're asking us to send. Uh, yeah, this one's not going to work the way it should, but it would actually have, there's a bit of a story behind this one, but it will give you a code, uh, an option to put that code in. Once you put the code in, it matches. It's still, uh, it hasn't expired. It will give you like little fireworks and say you are now verified. Once you're verified, then your listing will show up here. And you just want to make sure you're posting consistently as much information as possible on there so that you show up more frequently. Um, it might take a little bit of time before your listing starts showing up otherwise. So, yeah, with that, I'm just going to open up to the floor to see if there's any questions at all. Um, and if anyone's having any trouble, feel free to let me know and I'll see if I can help. You, you know, Renee, you're going yes. to cover, you cover if you haven't activated the account, because I see I activated a Google ad account, but not the, my business. But if you do act, uh, register, you said you have to do something to keep it active or not uh, get shut down or something. No. So once you've created, so have you got a Google My Business listing? No, yeah. not yet. I thought I had, but it's an ad, okay. Google ad account. It was something else. Sure. Right. No worries. So what you would do is, did you see, I think I put, did I put the link in there to create? So business.google.com forward slash create. Okay. Yep. So if you go to that link and then just go through that process of creating your Google My Business listing. Yeah. But you, yeah. Said, you said something about if you don't visit it, after a certain period of time, it might uh, get yeah. suspended or something. So what happens is, so when you create your listing, it will say to you, um, verify your account, right? And so you can verify it by, there'll be two options. You can either get Google to call your phone number, which is connected to your account, and they'll give you a code to verify it, or you can choose for them to send you a postcard to your address that you verified in the mail, once you receive that code, you go yeah. back in and you put the code in, which is what I was talking yeah. about. If you receive the code, though, in the mail and you don't do it for six months. Oh, okay. It, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. That from that yeah. point of view, if you don't respond, you... you yeah. You, all right. It'll um, it. expire. Yeah. I get it. Thanks. No worries. Thank you. Uh, Rose, did you have a question? Uh, yes, I've I've got an account, Anxious to Calm, and I've uploaded the the logo photo and the banner photo many times now, and it, it seems to stay there for five minutes. Next time I look, it's gone again, and I can't work out why. Wow. Okay. What's your business name? Anxious to Calm. So it's the number two in the middle. I sent you a, a message on chat. Oh, okay. With the business name. Um, what location? Brisbane. So some things that can be a little bit tricky too is when you start doing twos instead of two, like the word, um, because a lot of the time people won't search for that. Oh, wait a minute. So then... Um, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, you can get a little bit... Good point. <laughs> yeah, for your, your organic search. Yeah, so that's not showing up at all. Yeah. Have you verified your listing yet? Yes, I have ages ago. Well, really? You know, a few months ago, I think it was, no? 
Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Have you got your direct link? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't done anything over um, Christmas with it. So this is my first uh, look again back at what's going on and um, saw your workshop. So good time to try and get yeah. going again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd probably, if I were you, start posting consistently to your list. Yeah. Yeah. Get um, as much information in there as possible. See if you can get some Google reviews on there as well. Yeah. Thank COVID's you. not been a great thing for all of us, has it? Just as you're about to launch events and do, <laughs> do posting, um, everything changes, doesn't it? It does. Makes it really tough, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. take your point. Thanks for that. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Kimberly. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yes, how are you? Good. Um, so I've had a look at Google My Business. I've only just given myself authority to start, like, amending it now that I know how to. Yeah. If you Google, like, JSG Construction, it comes up with two photos because it had our home address there as well, so I've removed that. Um, so do you have a physical home address, a physical business address? We, I work from home. Yeah. So I don't want that to come up because it's a suburb out of Toowoomba. So yeah. I can still say that we're in Toowoomba or service yeah. the Toowoomba Warwick area. Yeah. But I, I've removed the address just then. So, yep. yeah. I, I just oh. know how, see that house there, see how it's not a very nice photo? Yeah. I, like I've got so many nicer photos. Like how do I try and give them a bit of a bump along yeah um so with that unfortunately google do choose those photos um you could upload maybe some more photos and maybe try and get some more views of the new photos that you put up and that could maybe change that for you but yeah that the client takes the photo and then that's how google puts it up yeah I, as a client, do that? Oh, you, uh, yeah. If you were to do that, you would need to sign into a different Google account. Yeah. Because you you would always be usually signed into your Google account that's attached to this. So you might need to sign into a second Google account that has no user or manager role on the listing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I should have done that a few minutes yeah. ago. Yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. You can do it now. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Um, okay, and we have Naomi as well. Can you hear me now? Yeah, how are you? Oh, good. I fixed my audio. Thank you. That's great. Um, I actually have two questions. So one was with regards to what you were saying about the links. Um, so like with the direct link, how you can send it to a client. Um, do you just copy the URL um, when you're in sort of like the manager part of it or do you then like go to bit.ly to make it smaller and and more compact like what's the best way to get your direct link yeah so um with now i've got to go back into this because i see they've changed this uh handle here so let's just have a quick look at what they've done here this is sign to See this handle that we've got, the at ISP Fish Market? Yes. Um, I haven't got a new listing here at the moment that I can have a look at that, what it's like for a new business. But if you go into, should be in here, here we go, your listing, mm -hmm. so home section, which is the overview, your business is on Google. And actually, this might be a good one for, I didn't even think of this, for Rose, if you have a look at this, view on search. So if we click on that, view your listing on search. That hopefully Rose will show you your listing on search. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, sorry, I didn't even think of that for you before. Uh, you can view it on maps or share your business profile. So let me click on that. Yep. Oh, okay, cool. Have a little link here. Yeah, so you could actually just share that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and the other question that I had is um, while sort of I've been listening to this um, and taking some notes, I've also been trying to 
do my Google, my listing um, yeah. one. Um, I'm really struggling to find a category. Like I can't get past the first um, page basically because I can't seem to find a category that my business fits under. Um, is it sort of, is there any tip on sort of, I'm trying to be as wide ranging as possible with the services to try and find what I fit under, but. Yeah. So tell me um, what it is again. Yeah, so it's uh, now for always is the business and I'm essentially a, a personal story writing service or a personal archiving yes. service. So. Um, so you know what I find even as a consumer, look, let's say I had never known anything about your business before, mm -hmm. I would even wonder what's a personal archiver? What is that? If you were to explain it in a term that I might search from Google if I knew, didn't even know that they existed. So essentially it's a personal storyteller. So someone tells me their story and then I write it down for them and give them a tangible copy that they can keep forever. So then what is that? If I'm searching for something and I don't even know that people do that stuff, mm -hmm. what would you, what would I search for? Well, I guess personal writer, personal storyteller, um, story recording services. Like those are all sort of like my, I guess my wider, um, my wider buzzwords, but even searching any of them, none of them kind of came up. Yeah, okay. I'm just trying to find the list of Google because, um, yeah, it's very hard. You might have to actually go under copywriter. I can't even find, I even typed in copy and nothing comes up. Yeah, it's very. Copywriter it, isn't a. Like Ancestry Family Tree, Naomi, uh, Rose said. Ancestry? And yeah, um, sorry to butt in, Naomi. I've oh, just, no um, yeah, I've just uh, been spending like a lot of people uh, time on ancestry, putting together a family tree, um, and to have someone collate that um, would be brilliant. And I've managed aged care facilities, and certainly, you know, grandchildren wanting family stories, all these kinds of things are really popular at the moment. So I understand how you finding it difficult to find your little niche word title whatever Very but hard one. yeah but but certainly um some something around you know family tree um save your save your uh, family you know so i can't think of it but you know that kind of thing preserving oh. family um history i wonder what sure. ancestry <laughs> Oh, yeah, look. search words type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's okay. something in that because I'm certainly in that in your sort of market, you know, as a as a client kind of person. Yeah, that's um, those are those are two avenues I'm also searching at the moment. Yes. I've um I've actually got an appointment with some of the aged care homes here in Toowoomba um that I'll be going to visit to let them know that that service is available. Maybe you guys could connect. Yeah, yeah happy to. Yeah. And then we can problem solve Google between us as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and that's the thing. Like, so, I mean, I believe I'm on the right section for it because it says, like, starting, start building your business profile and create profile. So, yeah, I've just typed in ancestry. I've typed in copy. I've typed in writer. I literally, I don't know how, like, hang gliding is an option, like, hang gliding is a <laughs> but yeah. writer isn't. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I know. So what, what about um, author? Like, I know it's not an author. I know that. It's it's no. going to be, that's going to be a tricky one. It really is. So like um, I type in author and it comes up Port Authority, Central Authority, Auditor. Yeah. Um, so what about, what does it say? What does it say when you put in writer? What does it say? But not even, don't even type the whole word. Just type, start typing write, you know. Uh, yep. Typewriter repair services, sign writing, typewriter supplier, wholesale florist, women's working hostel, then it just goes completely off script. Wordsmith is like, what about wordsmith? Like word, if you just start saying word. Uh, so for when I type in word, I get steelwork design company, public works department, worm farm supplier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think it's going to be a tricky one I think you'll just have to do some research on that and um it is it's something that everyone does struggle with if you have a look out I'm just trying to find here we go not, not I, a I had a look at the list like there's a category yeah. that says Zach like Z-A-C 
but there's nothing for any form of writer, journalist, copywriter. I just, I don't, I don't understand. Oh, there is copywriter? No, no, no. There's none of that. Okay, right. Yeah. So like copywriter, journalist, storyteller, con- like even just like content producer, like I can't find anything. Mm, I'm interested. Yeah, I'll have a, I'll, I'll um, have to, I don't even have anything that I can edit to even have a look for you, unfortunately. But yeah, you'll just have to really have a look around, see what you can find and just try and pick something that works best. Yeah. Um, it's all in what you call the business or product. Yeah. I named my product refund bag as that's what it literally is. Oh no, this is um, Matthew. This is more like the category that you have to put it under. And so Google determines a category and they're quite restricted. So you can't make anything up at all. Uh, yeah. It's really, it's really, really, really restricted. It's, and I get, I understand your pain. I go through it as well with, with, some of the business that we um, have to try and create categories for. But anyway. Sorry, can I ask, is it really important to have the right category? Yeah. For instance, mine's mental health, but that could well put many people off because, you know, a lot of mine is preventive work in parenting and antenatal services and that kind of thing as well. Yeah. You know, it's difficult. Yeah. Is it really essential then to have the right category? Definitely. Because if you don't have the right category, Google can't deliver you to the right people. So I've done the pro, I've done all the, the words. I forget where it was now, but you know all your um, key search yep. sort of words. Yeah, yeah. Put, yeah, put heaps of those in. I don't know if Naomi's done that. Will Google still find us doing that or is it just all down to the right category? It's all of it together. So right, all of it yeah. gets to be accurate and, yeah, it really does. It's very important. Like, It's a shame they don't have more sensitive um, categories to what yeah. people are actually doing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there's always a way that you could potentially even reach out to Google. Uh, they're, they're fairly responsive. Maybe reach out to them and just say, what would you suggest, you know, as a category yeah. um, in the help section? So in the actual listing itself, I'll have to head off in a second too, guys. Sorry. But in here you've got support. See down the bottom. Yeah, I have actually used them before yeah. when I was setting up the business profile and they were really, really good. Really good. Once upon a time, it used, you used to actually be able to physically call them from your app. Yeah. Actually call them and talk to a person. It was I've done that though. But okay. I've done that. I phoned them. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember how, but I did. I got through to some guy who rang me back from America. It was really good. Amazing, isn't it? I know. See, well, they've taken that option away. I don't know if it's back on again or not, but yeah, it was really good. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, I better make a move. Um, And so, thanks heaps for attending. I hope that helped. If you guys have any workshop topics that you feel like you'd benefit from, let me know because we can actually create topics, anything, any digital topic at all. And even if I can't, somebody within our expert base of advisors can create something. So especially if it's quite niche like Shopify or whatever. But just so you know, I do have some workshops coming up which might be helpful for anyone who's looking for um, to learn more about. I'll tell you some of the, the most popular ones. Um Oh, yeah. So we've got setting up Facebook and Instagram ad accounts correctly. That's something that's really important for anyone who's looking to do paid ads. Um, Facebook for business. Are you set up right? And I do part one and part two. So part one, you learn about Facebook for business because it's not about business pages. It's about the business suite. And then you have two weeks to go away and implement changes that you've learned. And then in part two, we physically go in and look at your how you've done it and make sure it's done correctly. Um, setting up your audience groups for paid advertising on Facebook, which uh, Facebook pixels and the conversions API. So it's something that you really need to make sure is installed on your website for retargeting before you start running ads. Otherwise, you're really missing out on a huge potential there with paid ads. Um, and domain verification. So if you just do a search for my name, you'll find all of my 
workshops that are coming up. And I just thought it might be something that could be helpful if you're looking to run paid ads. Sorry, can you just give that again, um, your contact details? Uh, my contact? Oh, so yeah. Renee Dombowski. So, you know, on the, I'll give you my my email. So if you email me, I can always email you back. So Renee, yeah, because I only just found you randomly last night. Somehow oh, it just you? popped up. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, that's all right. So it's Renee.Dombowski. Oh, is it? No, Renee. Sorry, it's Renee at businessstation.com.au. So R-E-N-A-E. Sorry, R-E-N-E-E. All right, yeah. Yep, at businessstation. Yeah. Dot com dot au. So if oh, you email really? me, yeah. yeah, I'll just send you a link if you like to the workshop. Yeah, lovely. Thanks for that. Not a problem. Thank you all so much for joining me. And I'm sorry we've gone over time. Uh, Rose, yep. Yep, thanks. I thought uh, you started at 10. It was obviously nine, wasn't it? <laughs> Nine to ten, yeah. Oh, I thought it was ten to eleven. That's yeah, what happens that's when right. you're in a rush. Now I've got your details. That'd be great. Yeah, great. Um, all right. <laughs> uh, Rose. Yeah. So, um, I just um, I don't know if you've seen it in the group, but I've just popped my email in the group. Oh yeah, great. No, I haven't, but I'll just have find a you somewhere. You see it. Mm. Sorry, Renee. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, I can't see your email. Um, in, in I chat it, or. It's just in the comments. Hang on. It should just be a little further up. Oh, yeah. It's um, so I'll do I'll copy and paste it for you right now. Okay. So you've got it. Okay. Oh, yeah. There it got is. It? Oh, yeah, it's like cool. Julie. You know, I've got Julie's, but not Naomi. Okay. Yep. So there's, yeah. So you can see Julie's. Uh -huh. Yeah. One is in again. There you go. Now for, for, now for always. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now for all. It's funny when it's all one word, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Okay. Have a good one. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.